All right. So from last class, we learned about uncertainties, right? So we, um, we talked about how we can add and subtract two number with uncertainties. Like for example, right here, let's do a little review. We have um, a measurement that gives you an uncertainty of 0 0.2. You're gonna add that to another number with an uncertainty of 0 0.1 and to do this, what you do is you do your ordinary mathematical operation. So either is a addition or subtraction. Now, what do you do with the uncertainties? Well, you always add them. So remember that a lot of people, okay, when they're doing subtraction, they would uh, subtract the uncertainties. No, 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 no. You always add the uncertainty when it comes to addition and subtractions. All right, so right now, we're gonna move our attention, of course, to multiplication and division. What do we do in that situation, okay? So for multiplication, okay, uh, let's do an example. We have 6.2 plus or minus 0 0.1, let's say gram, times, 2.4 plus and minus 0 0.2 gram milliliter sorry okay as you can see when you're multiplying and dividing it's okay for the two numbers to have different units in fact because of that okay the uncertainties will need to be converted into what we call relative uncertainty Okay, so here is a little bit more work than just adding the uncertainty. You can't just add the two uncertainty like we did before because these units are different. So what you need to do is that you need to find out what is the relative uncertainty for this and what is the relative uncertainty for that. So let's write that down. Okay, let's write that down. So step number one, find what we call relative uncertainty. The question is, how do we do it? Well, let's take a look at the first measurement first. You have a mass measurement of 6.2 plus or minus 0 0.1 gram. Okay, if you remember what that was, that was that's really meant as a range of 6.0 Okay, sorry, I mean 6.1 to 6.3. Anywhere between that is what this uh, measurement is talking about. So to find the relative uncertainty, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is take 0 0.1 gram, which is the uncertainty, and you divide that by 6.2. Okay? So you're taking the uncertainty and you're dividing it by the measurement itself. That's how you find relative uncertainty. Now, I can tell you right that is right now, that's gonna, that is 0 0.016, okay? 0 0.016, so that is your relative uncertainty. Um, hey, you can do the same thing with the other one. In fact, you have to do the same thing with the other one, so you take 0 0.2 milliliter, and you divide that by 2.4 milliliter, okay? And of course, that would give you 0 0.083, okay? So these are what we call relative uncertainty. This is the relative uncertainty for this value, and this is the relative uncertainty for this value, okay? Now, what some people do, and you don't really have to, is that you can turn relative uncertainty to what we call percent uncertainty. Okay? Now, well, what is percent uncertainty? Now, percent uncertainty is really relative uncertainty. All you're doing is you're taking your relative uncertainty and you're just multiplying it by 100. That's all, you, that's all you're doing, okay? So if that's the case, obviously, your 
percent uncertainty is 1.6 percent. Okay, and for the other one, which is 0 0.083, and you would multiply that by 100, you're looking at 8.3 percent. Okay, so what they're really talking about here with percent uncertainty is that in this measurement right here, due to the uncertainty of being 0 0.1, that is an uncertainty percentage of 1.6. Okay, for this value right here, the percent uncertainty is 8.3. Obviously, the higher the percentage of uncertainty, the more that this value is, I guess, larger in terms of range, okay? So when you have a number that is 2.4 plus or minus 0 0.2, that range is gonna be huge, okay? So, yeah, as much as that. All right, uh, knowing that, okay, let's do this question. So now that we have our uh, percent uncertainty, what we wanna do is that we want to add the percent uncertainty okay now you can always add the relative uncertainty in fact it's probably easier to do so but we're going to add the percent uncertainty 1.6 percent plus 8.3 percent okay that will give you 9.9 percent okay now that's important to note because we're gonna use that later on. Now let's do this question, okay? So let's do our 6.2 times 2.4. By doing that, this is gonna be 14.88, okay? And this is gonna be plus or minus whatever this is, okay? In this case, you're looking at 9.9% uncertainty okay now is this your answer I mean is that the answer no that's not the answer that would be a ridiculous answer what is 14.88 grams per uh, grams milliliter plus or minus 9.9 percent nothing makes sense here so somehow you're gonna have to turn this percentage to an uncertainty based on 14.88 so you're kind of like working backwards here, okay? How am I gonna turn 9.9% back into an uncertainty based on 14.88? Okay, the idea of course is very simple. All we do of course is we're gonna turn this back into a decimal. So we're gonna turn this back into a relative uncertainty by dividing it by 100, okay? So that would be 0 0.099. All right, then remember this 0 0.099 is the relative uncertainty. This is the relative uncertainty of this value. You see how before we divide this by this to get the relative uncertainty for this value? If we have the relative uncertainty, what would be the uncertainty for this value? Now, the answer is very simple. All you have to do is multiply these two numbers. Okay, so let's do this. So if you take 0 0.099 and you multiply that by 14.88, okay, that is going to be 1.473. Okay. Guess what? That is your final answer. So your final answer is going to be 14.88 plus or minus 1.473 grams milliliter. I know, I know, I know, I know. You're probably thinking, wow, multiplication requires a lot of work. And just to be honest, <laughs> you're right, it is. It is a lot of work. Okay, that's all because the two numbers that you're doing mathematical operation on has different units. Because with addition and subtraction, they had the same units. So it was 
easy. All you have to do is add the uncertainties. But when the units are different, you have to do more. You have to find what is the relative uncertainty for this value? What is the relative uncertainty for that value? Once you find it, you can actually add these two numbers together and you can just get to this right away. Okay, you don't really have to add these two and then um, actually you don't have to turn these into percent uncertainty and then add them. You don't have to do that. Okay, that is just an extra step that I put in. You can always add these two numbers. Okay, add these two and you will get to this right away. Okay, once you have the sum of percent uncertainty or sum of relative uncertainty, uh, you can multiply that by the answer to get your uncertainty value. Oof, that's a lot of work. Hey, I, ha I actually have a whole worksheet for you guys to work on to, you know, so you guys can get good at it. I know, I know. All right, so uh, let's do one more question. This time, let's take a look at division. What do we do with division? Okay, now with division is actually the exact same thing. So let's take a look at a number. Okay, 7.2 plus or minus 0. Let's say uh, 2 grams. And you're going to divide that by 1.3 plus or minus 0. 0.1 milliliter. Density question again. And what will be my answer? Okay, as I said, the idea with division is exactly the same thing as multiplication. So let's do the mathematical operation first. Okay, let's do my 7.2 divided by 1.3. That's easy. Okay, you should calculator and you should get 5.538. Now, theoretically, you should just say 5.5 because of significant digits, okay? Because this is two significant digits, this is two significant digits, so your answer really should be two significant digits. But I'm just doing a little bit more just for now, okay? No big deal. And plus or minus, what? What would that number be? All right, so let's go through the steps. Uh, we won't take the extra step. We'll just add the relative uncertainty without changing into percentage because I just want to show you what, what is percentage uncertainty. All right, let's go. Let's take my red pen. So let's take 0 0.2 grams and divide that by 7.2 grams. Okay, so 0 0.2 divided by 7.2 is... Okay, let me just... Divided by 7.2 is 0 0.028. Okay, I'm not going to multiply this by 100 because I'm really not into doing more work. Okay, then I'm going to take 0 0.1 milliliter and divide that by 1.3 milliliter. Okay, that will be 0 0.077. Okay, then I'm going to add these two numbers together. I'm going to add them together. So that will give me 0 0.105. Okay, so what am I going to do with 0 0.105? I'm going to take 5.5, 3, and I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.105. Okay. And that will give me 0 0.581. So my final answer is 5.538 plus or minus 0 0.581 grams per milliliter. Okay. So as you can see, division is really the same thing as multiplication, but just be careful the fact that you are dividing these two numbers. Okay. And for the uncertainties, make sure you find your relative uncertainty and then add them up. And at the end, 
um, you multiply this number by the answer to get the uncertainty. A lot of students forget that. A lot of students just take this and just, oh, there you go, that's my answer. And then of course they forget that this is not a value. There's no unit in this value. If you think about it, okay, this is just adding two relative uncertainties up, but that's not the uncertainties for 5.538. You're gonna have to multiply this to this to get what that real uncertainty is going to be. All right, so as I said, lots of questions, okay? Lots of practice for you to do. So, you know, make sure you can do them all and check your answers afterwards. That's very important. All right, the last thing that I'm gonna show you, okay, before uh, we call it a day, is um, something called percent error. So we're gonna look at percentage error and then, uh, We'll call it the day. Okay. Now, percent error is a way of showing how far off you are to the real answer. Okay. In terms of percentage. You know, you have a real answer. This is the real answer. By doing your experiment and looking at your experimental results, how far away are you? So, I have a formula right here that you need to know okay is that the percent error is equal to to the absolute value of your value whatever that may be minus the actual value okay you're going to close off the absolute value here and you're going to divide that by the actual value that is the formula and then you times 100 percentage so you always times 100 now if you don't know what these things are these are called absolute value meaning that whatever this number is and whatever this number is when you subtract the two and it gives you a negative answer you're gonna just make that positive now obviously if this number is bigger than this number you're gonna get a positive number you don't have to exercise that at all but sometimes this number may be smaller than that number if that's the case, you're gonna get some sort of negative answer. Then these guys are gonna say, make that positive, please. Okay, so that is the experiment. Uh, that is what we call the percentage error formula. So uh, let's, I guess let's do a question. Okay, so let's say if the real value, okay, the actual value is supposed to be, um, one grams per milliliter okay so we're looking at the density of water we all know that the actual value of density of water is one grams per milliliter that is something that you have to know so if somebody asks you hey what is the density of water well it's one grams per milliliter so for every one gram it will occupy one milliliter you did a water experiment and for some reason uh, you weigh some water and you took the volume of some water, you divide the two number, and for some reason you got 0 0.98. Okay? You know you're off. You know. You know. You weren't that accurate because the target is 1. You got 0 0.98. Well, how far are you off? Hey, let's take a look at this formula. Let's use this formula and then we'll tell you how far you are off. So let's calculate this. So percent error is equal to the absolute value of your value, which is 0 0.98, okay? Minus the actual value, which is one, okay? And then you take this and you divide that by the actual value, which is one, and then times 100. So if you think about it, this will be 0 0.98, minus one, okay, that will be negative 0 0.02, okay? Uh, remember, absolute value says whatever the number is, negative or positive, make it positive, so you wouldn't see the negative again anymore, so it'll be 0 0.02 divided by one times 100, and that is gonna give you 2%. 
So by getting this as your experimental value, you are 2% off. Oh my gosh, the world is going to end. Not really, but you know, 2% is really nothing. A lot of times for in my class, I guess, I give you that 5% leeway. Okay, 5% leeway. What that means is that um, whatever experiment that you're doing, okay, or whatever constant you're trying to prove, I give you that 5% error. So if your value is way too off from the actual value, and that percent error is greater than 5, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm going to have to uh, take some marks off. Okay, accuracy is very important. Anyway, hopefully you guys are okay with percent error. You guys are okay with multiplying and dividing uncertainties. You guys totally understood exactly what relative uncertainty means, percentage uncertainty, okay? And from last class, absolute uncertainty. So make sure you know these terms and make sure you ask me questions if you don't. All right, let's call it the day. Let's do those questions.